The largest volcanic region on Earth is not in Africa or Japan, but under the ice of Antarctica. Scientists found 138 volcanoes in its western part, and if they decide to go wild, you'll surely notice it. They could melt huge amounts of ice that will move into the ocean, raise its level, and make our planet uninhabitable for humans. But before you pack your things to fly away to another planet, hear me out. Only two of the Antarctic volcanoes are officially classified as active now. And it would take a whole series of eruptions, decade after decade, to seriously impact the whole world. Mount Erebus, one of the two Antarctic volcanoes currently in action, proudly bears the title of the world's southernmost active one. It has been continuously erupting since at least 1972. It emits plumes of gas and steam and sometimes even spews out rocks. And scientists call it Strombolian eruptions. One of the coolest features is a lava lake in one of its summit craters, with molten material on the surface. Such lakes are rather rare, because they need certain conditions to make sure the surface never freezes over. The second active volcano is Deception Island, a horseshoe-shaped landmass. It is the caldera of an active volcano that last erupted over 50 years ago. Scientists who monitor it say it shouldn't go wild anytime soon. Antarctica also has plenty of fumaroles. Those are volcanic vents that release gases and vapors into the air. In the right conditions, they can spew out enough stuff to build fumarolic ice towers up to 10 feet tall. Scientists keep an eye on the Antarctic volcanoes with seismometers that detect when the Earth starts trembling from volcanic activity. Sometimes they also use more complicated tech, but it's all really challenging because of how far away this polar region is and how tricky it is to get there. That's why no one can predict when one of the continent's volcanoes that are now sleeping might erupt. We can guess what this waking up would look like if we analyze the events from nearly 20,000 years ago. So, shall we? One of Antarctica's sleeping volcanoes, Mount Takahe, had a series of eruptions and spewed out a good amount of halogens rich in ozone back then. Some scientists say these events warmed up the southern hemisphere. Glaciers started to melt and helped finish the last ice age. For these events to repeat, we'd need a series of eruptions with substances rich in halogens from one or more volcanoes that are now above the ice. It's an unlikely scenario, but since it already happened in the past, it's not completely impossible. As for volcanoes hiding under a thick layer of ice, it looks like their gases would hardly make it to the atmosphere. But they would be strong enough to melt huge caverns in the base of the ice and produce a serious amount of meltwater. The West Antarctic ice sheet is wet and not frozen to its bed, so this meltwater would work as a lubricant and set the overlying ice into motion soon. The volume of water that even a large volcano would generate in this way is nothing compared to the volume of ice beneath it. So a single eruption wouldn't make a difference. But several volcanoes erupting close to or beneath any of the western Antarctica's big ice streams would. Those ice streams are rivers of ice that take most of the frozen water in Antarctica into the ocean. If they change their speed and bring unusual amounts of water into the ocean, its level will rise. As the ice would get thinner and thinner, there would be more and more new eruptions. Scientists call it a runaway effect. Something like that happened in Iceland. The number of volcanic eruptions went up when glaciers started to recede at the end of the last ice age. So it looks like, for massive changes, several powerful volcanoes above the ice with gases full of halogens need to get active within a few decades of each other and stay strong over many tens to hundreds of years. Antarctica stores around 80% of all the fresh water in the world, and if they melted all of it, global sea levels would rise by almost 200 feet. And then we'd have to look for a new planet to live on. But this again is an unlikely scenario. It's more likely that the eruptions under the ice will lubricate ice streams and seep water into the ocean. But it wouldn't be the end of the world. A super strong, super angry supervolcano could do it, though. And it has already happened in the past. Over 200 million years ago, the world went through a major makeover with not one, not two, but four massive volcanic eruptions and huge pulses. The supervolcano called Camp had been erupting over and over for 600,000 years. 
It all happened in Rangelia, a large chunk of land that used to be a supermassive volcano stretching across what's now British Columbia and Alaska. And it wasn't the lava or the volcanic ash that ruined the environment. The eruption made carbon levels skyrocket. The planet would never be the same again. This volcanic activity might have helped dinosaurs grow from cat-sized critters into giants we saw in Jurassic Park. It kicked off a 2 million year rainy season. It made the whole world hot and humid. And the dinos just loved it. Researchers dug deep into sediment layers beneath an ancient lake in Asia to uncover these secrets. They found traces of volcanic ash and mercury, clear signs of those epic eruptions. There were carbon signatures showing huge spikes in carbon dioxide levels. It made the atmosphere toasty, and the rain poured down. So the bad news is, another eruption like this could happen. The supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park has been sleeping for nearly 70,000 years. But if it wakes up, it would be many times more catastrophic than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. It's considered the most disastrous volcanic eruption in U.S. history. It followed two months of earthquakes and injection of magma below the volcano that weakened and destroyed the entire north face of the mountain. The eruption column went 80,000 feet into the atmosphere and spread ash over 11 U.S. states and several Canadian provinces. The last Yellowstone eruption was a thousand times greater than that. The ground above Yellowstone sits on a hot spot made of molten and semi-molten rock called magma. This magma stuff flows into a chamber beneath the park, about four to six miles down, making the ground puff up like a balloon. But then, as it cools down, the ground goes back to its usual state. Volcano watchers have been keeping an eye on this for a century. They noticed the ground lift up about 10 inches around 20 years ago. But since 2010, it's been going back down. The experts say we have no big eruptions on the horizon, so doomsday isn't coming anytime soon. But there's some underground activity going on lately which keeps us interested. Since humans haven't been around to witness every little thing Yellowstone does, it's kind of tough to say for sure what's brewing down there. Yellowstone has had some epic eruptions within the last couple million years. They happen like clockwork, with gaps of six to 800,000 years between them. The last big one was around 640,000 years ago, and it basically reshaped the entire landscape, spreading ash and debris as far as Louisiana. You can still see the aftermath of the last big eruption in the Yellowstone caldera today. Experts say a massive eruption like the last one is an unlikely scenario. We're more likely to see eruptions of steam and hot water or lava flows. When and with what force it will wake up remains a mystery to scientists. Ooh, mysterious mountain ranges hidden under thousands of tons of ice. Bizarre, transparent creatures with see-through skin, singing snow planes. Antarctica has its own terrifying secrets. And now, a mysterious ice hole the size of Switzerland that keeps popping open. And scientists have finally figured out why. This hole, called the Maud Rise Polynya, was first spotted in 1974 and 1976 in the Weddell Sea. Since then, it's been kind of playing hard to get. Sometimes it appears, sometimes it disappears for years. And when it does show up, it mysteriously changes size. For decades, researchers were trying to figure out what makes it form. Then, in 2016 and 2017, the Polynya went absolutely massive, more than 30,000 square miles. The hole stuck around for several weeks during winters. It was the first time since the 1970s that the Weddell Sea had such a huge, long-lasting Polynya. Here's the deal with Antarctic sea ice. In summer, the ice is at its smallest, around 1 million square miles. Yeah, that's considered small. By winter, it spreads to a whopping 7 million square miles, covering about 4% of Earth's surface in weird white tiles. Most of this ice grows during the weeks-long polar night on the floating ice shelves around the continent. These holes in the ice, called polynyas, usually form when strong winds from inland push the ice tiles apart. That same cold wind also freezes more seawater inside the hole, adding extra chunks to the ice sheet. But the Maud Rise Polynya isn't near the coast, 
where those winds normally help make holes. Out in the open ocean, holes like this are rare. Add in the fact that ice across the southern ocean has been shrinking. No wonder scientists are left bewildered. What exact conditions are creating this stubborn giant ice hole? To crack the mystery, the scientists dove into a mountain of data – satellites, floating sensors, even info from tagged marine animals. Plus, they had years of past observations from other researchers. And they found something unusual. In 2016 and 2017, the Weddell Sea's circular ocean current, called the Weddell Gyre, was stronger than usual. That extra punch made it easier for salty, warmer water from deep below to reach the surface. The Maud Rise Polynya sits above an underwater mountain called Maud Rise. During those big Polynya years, the stronger current caused salt to gather around this submerged peak. On the surface, the wind whipped over the ice, creating a corkscrew effect. It literally pulled that salty water up from below. The extra salt lowered the freezing point of the surface water, allowing the Maud Rise Polynya to form and stick around. Polynyas are really important for the planet. The dense salty water formed in these holes can travel huge distances, spreading across the global ocean and affecting climates everywhere. But these magnificent holes aren't the only cool and mysterious phenomena Antarctica is famous for. How about underground lakes? Or shall I say, under ice lakes? Because there are entire lakes hidden under Antarctica's thick ice. Scientists first found them back in 1970, using radar. And now they think there are around 400 lakes tucked under around 2 miles of ice in the explored areas. These lakes likely formed after Antarctica broke off from Gondwanda land, the ancient supercontinent. Surprisingly, the water in the lakes doesn't freeze because the ice above presses down too hard. Hey, it's physics, bro! The biggest of them all is Lake Vashtok, discovered in the 1990s. It sits a bit more than 2 miles below the ice. Scientists have drilled down to take samples, and the water they pulled up was about 26 degrees Fahrenheit, even though the lake had been trapped under ice for over 20 million years. There's also Lake Williams. In 2014, scientists made a lit discovery there. They found a thriving colony of microorganisms nearly a mile under the ice. Those tiny creatures never saw sunlight or fresh air. Instead, they used methane and ammonium as energy to grow. Another marvel hides in plain sight in the McMurdo Dry Valley. It's a waterfall that looks like something straight out of a horror movie. Bright crimson water, like blood gushing from a wound in the ice, pours down five stories from Taylor Glacier into Lake Bonnie. Ooh, spooky. But there's actually a scientific reason behind it. The water that feeds Blood Falls used to be part of a salty lake. Now, it's completely cut off from the atmosphere because glaciers formed on top of it. Trapped more than 1,300 feet underground, the water has become super salty three times saltier than seawater, and it can't freeze. This underground water is also packed with iron and completely lacks oxygen and sunlight. When it slowly seeps through a crack in the glacier and hits the open air, the iron oxidizes, basically rusts, and turns the water that eerie dark red. With such creepy landscapes, Antarctica might look like a frozen wasteland freezing cold, almost no rain, and winds that could knock you off your feet. The coldest Earth's temperatures ever was recorded there – minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And still, Antarctica is actually home to some seriously bizarre wildlife. For the longest time, scientists thought nothing could survive under all that ice. Turns out, they were very wrong. There are all sorts of creatures that have adapted to the brutal environment. Tiny microbes, crustaceans, colossal squid, and spiders so big, their legs could cover a dinner plate. Giant worms with shiny golden bristles and huge sharp-toothed jaws also lurk under the ice. And then there's the ice fish, a completely see-through fish with huge eyes and organs you can literally see through its skin. 
These fish have built-in antifreeze proteins to survive the freezing waters, and they can't live anywhere warmer. Even stranger, they don't have hemoglobin, the protein that makes our blood red. In other words, they survive without the stuff that literally keeps most animals alive. But Antarctica wasn't always the frozen desert we know today. Millions of years ago, before the Ice Age, it was actually warm, lush, and full of life, maybe even home to ancient civilizations. Hard to imagine, huh? Scientists figured this out after finding fossilized wood, tropical tree remains, and leaf impressions, all pointing to the existence of rainforests. On top of that, they've uncovered fossils of marine animals, birds, and dinosaurs from the Cretaceous period. Even tiny creatures left their mark. Fossilized beetle wings from 14 to 20 million years ago, single-cell fossils, and, astonishingly, 50 million-year-old sperm cells preserved in the egg case of an extinct worm. So now, it probably won't shock you when I tell you that beneath Antarctica's thick ice sheets, there's a massive hidden mountain range. The Gambertsi Mountains stretch for 745 miles and rise to almost 10,000 feet, about the third the height of Mount Everest. And all this is buried under between 6,500 to 13,100 feet of ice. The mountains were discovered in 1958. Scientists noted a thin patch of ice and some weird gravity readings while crossing the continent. Even though no one has ever seen those mountains directly, researchers use radar to map their shape and gravitational and magnetic readings to study them all the way to their base. Perhaps the craziest part is that the Gambertsis are around a billion years old. So, in theory, they should have eroded away long ago. How they're still standing is a mystery. Most scientists think a frozen mantle beneath the ice might be protecting them from erosion keeping this ancient range intact. And finally, Antarctica has its own soundtrack. The Ross Ice Shelf, the continent's largest ice shelf, is several hundred feet thick and spreads over 193,000 square miles, roughly the size of France. And scientists have recently discovered that this massive ice slab actually sings. The eerie melody comes from wind blowing over snow dunes, which creates vibrations in the ice and a nearly continuous seismic hum. You can't hear it with your ears, but seismic sensors pick up the mournful tune. In fact, it was discovered by accident. Scientists just installed special sensors to monitor other ice behaviors. Now, even cooler, the song changes depending on what's happening on the ice. Melting, storms, and shifting snow all tweak the vibrations. Researchers are now using this haunting melody as a kind of early warning system. They listen to it in real time to track the ice shelf stability and potential collapse. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.